I hope you stay with us for today's discussion. I've got two industry luminaries who are going to be talking about cloud data security. So I think if you're interested in that topic, stick around, you'll enjoy this discussion. I'm Ed Amorosa from Tag Cyber, and I want to welcome you to a discussion today around cloud data and cloud data security and some modern methods that we use to to protect our sensitive stuff that we're whipping off into the cloud. And I've got two experts here who are gonna be commenting on this. Uh, one running a very cool cybersecurity company called Laminar, Laminar Security. And John Massarini, my good friend and colleague who's been in the industry for a long time, knows a lot about this topic and now advises companies on it. So Amit, why don't we start with you, uh, Mitch uh, Shaked, who, who runs uh, Laminar. Amit, tell us about yourself and about the company, and then we'll hear from John. Thank you, Ed, and hello, everyone. I'm Amit, the CEO and co-founder at Laminar. Ten years now leading teams in the data, AI, and security space. And at Laminar, we've built the first data security platform for the club. And that's important because most people have started by thinking about cloud as an infrastructure thing, and I, we've all realized how important the data is. So it'll be fun to learn from you how, uh, how that's secured. So thanks for joining us. John, welcome. Uh, tell everybody a little bit about your very uh, fine com your your very fine uh, background in this area. Uh, thanks, Ed. Uh, so, uh, John Mastrini, uh, as Ed mentioned, a research analyst here at TAG, uh, three times CISO uh, for the last 18 years. Uh, before that, about 12 years in information security consulting. So, all in all, uh, about 30 years. Um, like to say, I've been doing it since it was cool to do. So, uh, looking forward to today's discussion. Uh, it's absolutely one of the things that um, we find that we talk about most uh, is uh, cloud security. So, yeah, looking forward to it. John, you've been one of the people who made this cool to do, right? That's, <laughs> that's the way to look at it. So, that's good. Well, Love thanks it. for joining us. So, Mid, I want to ask you a question. Most CISOs that you talk to and security teams that you talk to will tell you they have a gazillion different things they're worried about. They have to worry about endpoints and networks and devices, all that sort of thing. You and I, and I suspect John, probably agree that data is really important, perhaps the most important thing. I'm wondering, when you're having these discussions, what are some of the arguments that are useful to, to maybe point out or remind them that the data is really, really important here and should be prioritized? Yeah, and I think uh, 80 gazillion is the accurate number of uh, <laughs> issues that they have. But yeah, especially when we talk about cloud data security, I think, I think what's so exciting about this is that the cloud has opened many opportunities for data-centric innovation, right? It's about the, the people and the, the processes that now we have autonomous teams that own their data, own their applications and can innovate fast. It's about the technologies. Now we see dozens of new technologies to store, use and share data. And so organizations are doing that to use data and now data can be shared and, uh, and created in, in minutes, not in months, right? Even if we think about the most uh, basic example of sharing an internal file with a business partner, then in the on-prem environment, it could, could take you months of, of pain and bureaucracy and network configurations. If you're using S3 bucket, for example, it is three, three clicks away. So we see all this data boom. But the problem is that today, every time the data grows, so does risk. And the reason is that when data proliferates, data security does not follow. So we see all this shadow data that people didn't even know about, right? And so if you are CISO, what can you do? You can either resist all the great uh, trends of, uh, of innovation around data and say, no, you can't do that. You still have to go through all these processes, but nobody wants to feed that person, right? Modern security is about enablement. And so now there's an opportunity with cloud data security to do it with agile cloud data security and actually decouple risk and growth for cloud data, basically enabling the engineers and data scientists to innovate as fast as they can without adding to the risk. And I think this is the first exciting thing about cloud data security. The second is around uh, building and maintaining trust with customers and business partners around privacy and compliance, because data security is not just about uh, security, it's also about uh, if you store uh, data of your business partner and it is exposed to the entire organization, then it still can be embarrassing. 
And the third thing is the opportunity to actually reduce the cloud costs because the nature of data is that it's very easy to create and replicate, but it's very hard to delete because nobody wants to be responsible for deleting a data that somebody else uses. And so what we see is huge amounts of data that just sit there, right? They add risk, they add cost, but they add no value and being able to delete them can significantly reduce the, the cloud cost. So there are three great opportunities to become enablers of data-centric innovation. That's, that's what's so exciting about it. Yeah, John, anything to add that I certainly agree with what Amit was saying, any, any, any additional pointers? There? Yeah, well, I just, I just really add that with the changing uh, regulatory landscape, uh, especially around data breaches, data security, coming out of the US, coming out of the UK, um, it really is, it, it's becoming more of a focus from a regulatory perspective and a compliance perspective. So it's it's no longer just kind of a data security issue. It's really a bigger risk issue for most enterprises than, you know, we used to rely on everything being in our infrastructure and, and kind of in many ways relying on the physical security and, and how hard it was to get to these uh, these data stores as they move to the cloud, all of those controls that we were you know, historically relying upon are gone, right? And, and you know, a, a lot of the DevOps teams and everything can just stand data stores up, take them down around uh, without really understanding the, the regulatory you know, impact of what they're doing. So I certainly think a lot, of, a lot of the new laws that are coming out are gonna, have, are gonna put a lot of focus onto, onto this topic. John, let me stay with you. I want to talk cloud quick, quickly. There's these topics, uh, CSPM and CNAP, like where, where you, you and I have both seen these topics pop up. Does it surprise you that that's kind of where we started? Because that tends to be more around posture of the infrastructure, less about data. Have you seen that? And, and is, is that now the, a foundation for doing data? Or, I, I'm guessing that's probably not sufficient to protect data, like just doing CSPM. Do, do I have that right? Yeah, and it really isn't, right? So obviously understanding the infrastructure and you know the overall posture of the environment is is critical. But really, if you look at the whole, the, the way the development and applications are being developed these days, the model's incredibly different, right? Um, when you look at DevOps and how they're leveraging the cloud, the developers can, you know, again, they can just stand uh, S3 buckets up or, or, you know, move them around, make duplicates. And it's really not just around, it, it's really understanding what data they have and, and where it is, not just, oh, is my system patched? Is the net, is the fire, the network firewall uh, configured correctly? It's really around understanding the data itself, which again is, is slightly different than what we're accustomed to. So, Mitt, on this issue of uh, CSPM, CNAP, and so on, I'm guessing that's a good foundation on top of which we can do security. And, and certainly businesses right now would be more interested in the data than, say, the underlying infrastructure. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Sure. And I 100% agree with, the, with what John said, right? The infrastructure security, CSPM, CWPPs lack the data context. And so now DSPM solutions, right, data security posture management integrate with CSPMs to provide this data context for infrastructure security. But still, it won't be too long before CSPMs will add some data prioritization to prioritize infrastructure security solution. But here's the thing, Ed, prioritizing infrastructure security based on data is not data security. Because when you want to make sure, for example, that you don't have any customer data in your development or test environment, you don't care about the infrastructure on which it sits. If it's an S3 bucket or an RDS or a MongoDB or a Postgres, right? You care about the data and where it should or should not be. When you want OPII to be encrypted, same story. Where data, where's the data and how it is protected? If you want all restricted data to not be publicly exposed, then you don't care about the, the fact that this asset is public by design the, the infrastructure is public by design, but you care about the fact that there's sensitive data that should not have been there. And so this is what data security is really about. It's about abstracting the infrastructure and protecting data directly. Now, you know, some people would make the case that existing solutions for protecting data along the lines you, that you said on premise are just perfectly fine to just pick up and drop over into cloud. I mean, you can make that case. To make the counter case there. Why, why, why do you think that um, protecting data in cloud 
is different? Because I'm guessing a lot of people watching would say, oh, just carry over this same old, same old uh, over. What, what, why does that not work? So that's a great question. We, we all know the difference between lift and shift and solutions that just work in the cloud and cloud native solutions. Because what being cloud native means is that you can leverage all the benefits that you get from the cloud. It's not just being able to operate in the cloud. And so it's about being agentless and asynchronous and with zero performance impact, because instead of scanning the data source themselves, you can create a copy or a snapshot and then scan this to not affect the, the production pipeline. And it, it's also about, or, or maybe the most important thing, right, is the, the autonomous uh, solution of being cloud native, because now there's an opportunity to leverage the cloud service providers APIs to discover all data automatically without asking for any user intervention, intervention without them pointing at the different data stores. And so all these great benefits is what cloud native means. And this is what you should expect from modern solutions in the cloud. Yeah, I would agree. You know, it's funny. I've been predicting that pretty soon it's just going to be redundant to say cloud. I mean, just, that's the place we're going to do business. And certainly newer companies, smaller ones that are growing, live there. So everything you're saying, I think, eventually would just apply to everything. Now, now John, you, you've kind of watched a lot of these uh, cloud security solutions, including data, uh, get subjected to things like um, audit and review. Has that been mostly manual to date? How, how has that gone uh, in your um, estimation when somebody has gone in, like organizations saying they can handle the cloud security, just going in and reviewing it manually? How, what, what's been your experience watching it? Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's one thing to it's one thing to get through an audit, right? And it's one thing to get through, you know, to 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 have a secure, you know, data environment. Um, you know, as I uh, kind of pointed to, doing it manually, you rely on the folks who are standing up the data stores to tell you they're there. And you know, we find a lot of, especially in a lot of the enterprises we speak to, you know, we find that there is this problem of um, you know, I'll give you an example. We, we we made a change to an application, so we backed up the database. Well, that application has gone live. It's now you know running in production for a year, and this backup abandoned database is still sitting out there that nobody knows about, right? And you don't have one of them; you have a dozen of them per application, or all these different flat files and everything else that kind of in you know is built up around this this DevOps kind of new world that is data centric, right? It's it's and it's not about, as Ms. said, right? It's not about patching a vulnerability or anything like that. It's around understanding the data files that are there. And unless that developer tells a systems team or a security team to go scan that that image or that workload, nobody knows it's there. So the ability to leverage all the cloud native APIs to find those things, I think is just th that fundamental difference. You weren't going to go pick up a, a, a five terabyte database that's running in a legacy infrastructure and make a copy of it, right? It, it, it just doesn't happen. Now you push a button and all of a sudden the whole workload image is, is duplicated in 10 seconds and you have a, a new database you can send up. So the worlds are very different. So those legacy applications tend to not fully understand and, and you know solve the problems when it comes to doing data security or all, you know, those manual audit problems are just, they're, they're never ending. You know, Mid, I've heard you talk about how when you do it manually, the inventory is out of date very quickly and problems with known unknown. Share, share a little bit of insight there into what happens when you do these things manually. Sure, and I want to be even bolder, right? We need to cross these things off the list. There is no such thing as manual cloud data security. With the amazing amounts of data in the cloud, right, large enterprises have thousands, hundreds or thousands of cloud accounts with millions or tens of thousands of, of data assets and millions and billions of files, it's just impossible to solve all, all of this manually, right? It's just overwhelming amount, amounts of data. And so sometimes if you just want to meet the standard of due diligence for compliance, maybe you can get around inefficiently, but you can get around with doing some manual efforts, but the standard of due diligence for security is is even higher, right? Because what attackers are looking for is not the main production database that may be protected, but is exactly this one thing that is just out there exposed. And so you need to cover 100% of your environment, and the only way to do that is with automatic discovery. 
I mean, what's been your experience with like these cloud tools from Amazon and Microsoft, like Macy, Purview, things like that? Th those have been very popular tools. Do they help here or are they doing something a little different? Yeah, so I think they are great tools. And more than that, they were the first to yeah. address the new environment of the cloud, right? And each cloud service provider had their own. There's Macy, there's Purview, and Google DLP, and they are great. The only problem is that when you think about data security, you don't want to protect the data in your S3 buckets. You want to protect all your data. And so having a single pane of glass for your multi-cloud environment and for all the different technologies, not just the Azure blob or the S3 bucket, but also, for example, self-hosted data stores, right? If you're running a virtual machine and a database within it, you want to know which data you have inside and how it is protected. And these tools do not cover, and they are not designed to do this. And so they lack the ability to have a broader view of all your cloud data and the security posture of it, which is really important. Also, I'll add one more thing, which is because of their architecture and the fact that they are scanning 100% of data to anonymize perhaps every row, they are also extremely expensive. And so modern architectures use smart sampling to understand which data you have, and therefore they have way significant lower costs and therefore the price is also lower. John, John you and I have done a lot of work with clients who um, just assume that the big cloud providers have got them covered on everything. What's been your experience? Do you think that's been a phenomenon that be like Microsoft, you just assume that you're, you're all set there. Um, what, what have you seen? Yeah. And look, the, the, it's, it's fundamentally, you have to admit it's not a priority for any of the cloud providers, right? Their, their job is not data security. Their job is to provide infrastructure. So, you know, while, you know, they've, they've met um, that entry level need uh, with their tools, you know, that's the, I, I don't feel the investments there, right? Um, they, they, they're trying to give that kind of the, the bare minimum. Um, so again, folks can possibly check off a compliance, you know, checklist, but it doesn't really address the data security issue. And kind of just to tie into something Mitt was saying, they also, you know, if you run AWS the solution or Microsoft solution, you get a you get a good view into what they do. But if you're multi-cloud, you miss the whole other side of the, the equation, right? You don't see everything that that AWS workload can go into the GCP environment and what data it can access. So really, the the cross-cloud environment in, the, in those multi-cloud environments having tools that can support the whole view, not just the singular view, I think is super critical. I mean, let's get, finally, we get to cloud security um, you know, for data. I think of, uh, analysts are calling it things like data security posture management, all these different terms that are used. Let me set the stage. Typical enterprise that we see has no organizational structure for this. They don't have a lot of people to point at this thing. So what, what's the right strategy? Are there any real key insights here that you can offer to people who might be watching? I need to do something here. What, what are the strategies that they should be thinking about? And again, your team, you've got a lot of experience in this. So I, I, what, what can we learn from you? Sure. So first of all, yes, it, it's, it's fairly new to many organizations because for many, 2022 was the first time they heard about the new solutions of cloud data security. And one thing about data, cloud data security, you said it's cloud security for uh, data. I want to say it is a data security solution for the cloud. And that's the first observation we have to make. It's a data security solution that is designed for the cloud, but later on, perhaps to, to cover more, more environments. And so by this is the first thing, right? And so it means that we enable two things. We enable cloud security teams to have a data-centric approach and to prioritize their efforts better and to also have data uh, security understanding of the data that is exposed. Obviously, it's, it's, it's an important part of cloud security and that can be done directly from the, the platforms or the integrations with the existing cloud security solutions. But there are also data governance teams and data teams and uh, data protection teams that care about the cloud. And so for them, being able to abstract the complexity of the cloud, to abstract the complexity of access, and just to care about what they really know and what they care about, which is data and how it is protected and where it should or shouldn't be, this is another advantage of the solution. So it's it's a long way to say the technology needs to 
make it more accessible for both cloud security teams to understand how data is protected and data security teams to understand the cloud and solve the challenges there. And what we encourage is exactly this collaboration between these teams. Yeah. I mean, what's the role of automation in all this? I would think automation would be the underlying kind of uh, theme. But if you had to put one word to it, that would seem to me to be the word that would go with something like this. Do I, do I have that right? I think so. I think automation is is key part of of the how, right? It's you cannot do that manually, as we we already mentioned, and especially and John mentioned it earlier when we talk about shadow data, knowing what you don't know cannot be done manually. So having automatically automation for data asset discovery and classification and security posture and understanding the the gaps there is critical. John, what's been your experience in looking at these uh, data security posture management solutions? For example, from, from Laminar and others, um, I, 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 for me, it looks like a bright spot. I, I've always viewed this as kind of a gap as we've moved into the use of yeah, cloud. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, it's, um, you know, we've seen, you know, especially over the last 18 months or so, you know, just a significant number of enterprises you know, having cloud first strategies and, and really kind of going full on into the into leveraging the cloud. And you know, the ability to rely on your legacy solutions, uh, it just doesn't work. So so having this automation and, and having the ability to really have that capability of looking in and finding all of your data. You know, understanding that they they absolutely tie together. It, you know, it, the the cloud security posture management, you know, is the foundation where the the data security uh, you know kind of sits on top of that. They're not. It's not one or the other. It's definitely both, right? And it's you know, we go back to the ironically the same foundation of you know defense and depth, right? You have to fix you know all of it and and manage all of it. And I think they work very well together, but I it. Enterprises can't be myopic. They can't say, oh, we went and bought, you know, a CSPM solution and we're done, right? Because then the next level is is the data. And all you have to do is look at some of the breaches as of, you know, over the last year, some very large breaches that are just S3 buckets hanging out on the internet with, with no security around it because nobody knew they were there. That's a really good insight. Admit, I'm pre in preparing for this, I see you've got a very cool research team at Laminar writing some super interesting blogs. I encourage people um, to go to the website, read some of the blogs, but it uh, seems like you guys are really digging in here. I read, read something very nice about versioning and some other things that you guys are doing. Tell us a little bit about your research team and what kind of work you're doing. In this area. Yeah, thank you, Ed. So. Our mission is to make it simple to protect data in the cloud. And right now it's, as we know, unfortunately quite complex. And so in our mission to make it easier, we also want to shed a light on the things that are currently unknown. And maybe the, the most uh, interesting example that we recently found is everything around data that you think you have deleted, but it's actually still there. And so versioning is one example for that, right? You think that you are deleting the data, but there's a feature that is enabled by default that makes your data still available if you want to later uh, restore the data. And so it's still there. And if you are in the environment with the right permissions, you can read this data even though it is it is deleted. And many more researchers are research are is coming. And just one example, maybe. Uh, to give an overview for something that is not uh, out there yet, but we've done a, a research on publicly available uh, assets and the data within them. So we automatically scanned millions of uh, organizations and found millions and billions of, of files there, including sensitive data. And so that's just to demonstrate how even when people think their public assets are only containing the data they know, they actually contain sensitive data they didn't know they have there. And so many more researchers about the complexity of the access and about security posture and these types of uh, topics and also remediation is, is important and we uh, post a lot about that.
that's an awesome project. That's something we'll look very closely at and probably steal liberally from that research. So <laughs> that sounds good. John, John, I'll give you a chance to give a final point and then admit we'll, we'll give you the last word. But John, any final um, sort of uh, recommendations or advice that you might have for teams that realize, wow, this is something I better go do? What, what would be your advice? Yeah, I, you know, th there's two thoughts. Um, you know, we are now seeing, uh, especially if you're in a regulated environment, we're seeing more and more of the regulators expect enterprises to have a very solid understanding and control structure around what's going on in the cloud. So uh, honestly, you know, as we typically see, the regulators are a little bit behind the curve. And now that they're getting caught up, they're walking through the doors, fully expecting an enterprise to understand their risk in the cloud. Um, and the only thing I would uh, add other than that is um, don't overlook um, the identity management side of your cloud infrastructure. There's a lot of uh, trust that's built into the cloud. There's a tremendous amount of abuse of that trust, inadvertent abuse of that trust. Uh, so when, you, when you're looking at the data security side of it, understanding how identity plays into that is super critical. That is awesome. Good advice. Uh, very practical. So thanks, John. And, and Amit, we'll give you the last word if you're talking to a team. And, you know, it's pretty likely, given what you guys do at Laminar, I'm sure you have this discussion frequently with clients about uh, their data security and cloud. What is like just a really important uh, sort of closing uh, thought that they should go away from our discussion here thinking? Yeah. So in many cases, security is not about being perfect. It's about doing the best thing you can given all your priorities and everything you have to do. Uh, and also everything that is available in the market. And so what has changed in 2022 is that now it is possible to know where your data is. It is possible to know how it is protected. It's possible to detect gaps and it is possible to remediate them easily. And this is something that we're, we're so used to the thought of, yeah, I have no idea where my data is, right? And when there's no solution, then you can continue to not do anything about it. But now is the time to solve it. And you can solve it in a very elegant way, in a very easy to deploy, easy to install, easy to operate, zero performance impact and so on. And so it is what we have to do. Right. If we want to protect the data, is to use these modern solutions to to do it right. That is wonderful. Well, I I want to thank both of you guys. For those of you who are interested in um, more information, John Masserini has a wonderful blog, and he uh, obviously publishes a lot on our tag CyberSite. And Amit and his team at Laminar have an awful awful lot of useful uh, resource materials. Um, it's a good company, good platform. I hope a lot of you will give uh, Amit a call. Um, John, thanks for joining us. I hope things are going well down there in sunny Miami. Nice, Thank nice you. to see you. And Amit, as always, wonderful to see you. Thanks for sharing really, really useful information. And I hope people are in touch with you. Thank you so much. And for everyone else watching, we'll see you all next time.